Okay, um, thank you for having me here and um, I'm just going to talk about my last four installations and then right at the end there's, a, um, there's just a few of the old works that I've got and then I'm going to show you a video that I absolutely love. Not many people have seen it. Um, but it's just one of the last videos I've done. Anyway, um, so um, where my work starts from is, or has started from, was about identity many, many, many years ago. And as you see here, these are my three surnames. My original surname is Sidonis. Um, that's my father's surname, and that was given to us when we were born. But because uh, my father was, uh, my parents were refugees to Czechoslovakia after the Greek Civil War, they couldn't, they couldn't pronounce our name, so they wrote my name as Sidonisova because I'm a girl. They added Ova on the end. Um, and then when we came to Australia, they said, ah, oh, that's a very long name, can you change it? And so they gave us the name Sironis. <laughs> and it's really interesting because I get, when I get spammed, it's, it's really interesting because there's only five Sironises in the whole entire world. And that's because that's not really our name. Um, so it's sort of made up. And, and my name is originally Tsironi without the S because if you're male in Greece, you've got the S on the end. And if you're not, it's just the, the original name. Um, so this work was in uh, 2022. Uh, it was in Albany, um, Albany Town Hall, and it's an installation that you walk into. So as you walk in, this is what you see, and it's called Hammer and Honey, and it references the world as it was then. So it was like a mirror. So you walk in and you see a single fold-out bed, which was commonly used in refugee camps, um, um, camping, whatever. Um, they're not very popular anymore. Um, but um, I stripped it back and I covered it again in red velvet. Um, the light source creates fabulous um, shadows and it's a work on from a work that I did in 1992, I think, um, which was a military um, medical bed that I stripped back and covered in red velvet and had lights hanging over it. Um, and then, so th this, is, this is what you walk into. This is the work right at the back of the bed, which relates to the horizon. And on the other side of the space, as you walk in, there's the bed. The bed is here, just here. And then there's all these, um, everything that I use is recycled. like. And that was always right from the beginning of my art practice, but originally it was because I couldn't afford new materials. And then it developed into, it was like a treasure trove of recycled material. And now it's referencing the fact that we are wasteful society. So, and the, this references with a bed, the importance of the environment. So these sticks are actually covered in um, a grey military blanket 
that of all crazy things Rottnest used to have. Um, like grey grey blankets, woolen blankets to me in military. That's how I was brought up. But when I came to WA I went up for holiday to Rottnest <laughs> and they had grey military blankets and I thought, oh that's poverty. <laughs> there there you go. And it's that vulnerable space between uh, birth and death, that moment where you realise that um, your importance is no more important than anyone else, including the environment and the world that we live on and other uh, beings, animals and so forth. As you walk through that space, you come into this space, which is uh, a more like it's a continuation of it. And I've got wall works that are reflective. So, uh, so these works on the wall, the black ones, when you look at them, you see yourself. Um, the big photographs uh, of myself and Molly. Molly's uh, dressed in a uh, feather dress, it, which is one of my very old sculptures that I made many, many years ago, which you will see. Um, and I'm dressed in camo fabric and I'm really into camo fabric purely because of what it represents in our society and in other different societies because each country has got their unique camo. Um, as I say unique, it might just be 10% of change or might be the, um, ref it's reference to the landscape of that country, but it also, in particular Australia, references the, I took photos of trees, tree trunks, around spring, many years ago, and actually the camouflage that a lot of countries, it's copied of the environment that they are in. So the environment's got this fabulous sort of um, camo surface to protect themselves from invaders. And we wear it to attack. We use it to protect ourselves, but for attack. So I sort of play with all of that. What does it actually mean? Um, now the, the letter, okay. The letter is um, uh, another recycled work, uh, a piece that I found um, in a very um, uh, developing suburb um, and I covered that in uh, the camo, uh, the grey blanket and it sort of promises to go, keep going. So it's like from, from the physical to the sacred or the, the spiritual to heaven, you know. Um, the images uh, the, the work on the wall, I'm really into reflections because instead of taking necessarily a photograph of a portrait of someone, I produce something that's reflective so that they can actually create their own identity or see their own identity. Um, and when other people come into that space, they see that person. So. About the reflective surfaces there, the black ones. Yeah. The frames, though. Do you want to say something? Oh, about the so the frames are all recycled. Every, everything is recycled, including the reflective acrylic. So I've got a friend that's got an acrylic business, and I just ring him and I said, Can I have anything that's black? Or can I have anything that's white? Or whatever, that you don't want, that you can't use anymore. And then I work with that. And I work a lot with text. 
as well. Notice the frames, they're all different, but they're from all different eras. And also that white line, that actually references the, not just the horizon, but also the bed that's at the front. Sorry, what was that? The bed that's at the front of that installation. And so you see yourself in all of these. And I also, because uh, since my cancer treatment, I can't do welding anymore because I shake. So I went, no, what can I do with that? You know, like, how can I utilize that? And I started actually carving into the uh, acrylic surfaces. There is not one straight line. Um, and I think, not in this one, but in this one, there's a, there's a whole, so I put them together and I, I ran across and drew a line straight through there. You can sort of see part of the line there. So that's the photographs and that's, um, I also incorporated domestic objects um, but most of these objects are actually um, not so domestic as much as um, ones that you use when you're moving around so, or developing something. So I started using tools um, that, were, that reference home. Um, and coming back home. And the yellow pieces are called, so this is called hammer and honey, but the yellow pieces are actually called, um, I, will be, I will build you a home. That's the photographs. And that's, um, this is a, a, a earth digger that digs a hole in the ground for footings for home and hair, human hair. This is the second work. It's called, oh no, I have to remember. Uh, oh, that's right. So space, do, do you know about the organisation space? Yeah, they they invite artists to, put, and then they give them a location and say, "Can you do something with this, um, the community and the location? We don't care where you're coming from, but can you do something?" And my location was Armadale. They chose me, and I'm like, "Okay, I'll go <laughs> all over Armadale." By the way, I love our, loved Armadale. I met the most incredible, incredible people from all, from everywhere, from rich, poor, whatever, you know, really unusual people. And they were pretty wild. And, and I thought to myself, um, why is it that the council is always pushing me into one area? not into the areas that I was really interested in, which were the old areas of Armadale, which were the, the farms, you know? Anyway, I realised that they were pushing me into the new development areas because that's where a lot of the migrants were moving to that were not cashed up. Um, and there was hardly any trees. There was, it was all very new with that fake grass, you know, that fake grass that people put in their garden, I don't know why, but they do. Um, and the reason was, was because most of those people are living in between Coburn Sounds and Armadale, and they go shopping to Coburn Sounds because they don't want to be seen as shopping at Armadale. 
but the best shops are at Armadale. <laughs> you know, like, I used to go there nearly every day and I would shop at Armadale. Um, anyway, I was really baffled by that, so I started asking the local people about why, and it was all about their identity, them not feeling like they belonged, and there was a lot of racism and classism in there involved. So I started expanding on that, and I was having lots of problems because I've got the shakes and I couldn't take any photographs. So I got a friend of mine, Duncan Wright, who's a brilliant photographer, to come along with me and spaced uh, offer to pay for him um, to come in and start taking photographs of different, different people, different locations in the area that Armadale was pushing us into, but also sneaking the other areas in. And so this is an installation where you, I took one of the trees that was planted by Armadale Council on one of the verges of the new development, but they forgot to water it. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it died. But instead of taking just the trunk and the, and the leaves, I took the whole root system and everything. We piled it in the car, drove home like this, <laughs> and then installed it on a baby, um, that's baby scales, very old baby scales. And the video behind is actually us driving through the area of Armadale. And it's beautiful sound. Uh, one of uh, Duncan's friends, Anuso, and they played, or they, the couple played the music and we recorded it. it was, it's beautiful. It's like it moves with every time we would run over a rock or something, the music would go up and down. It was, it was just beautiful. And behind the screen, you can walk actually behind the screen and be part of the, because you create shadows, and actually be part of the work and the space is about that wide. And then I used also text, which is, um, which I often use, and it's from interviewing the people. So one, uh, one guy was talking to us about, they. The house was over 100 years old and it was going to be pulled down for the new development. I just couldn't believe it, you know. It's heritage and it's important. There was nothing wrong with it and it was going to be pulled down. And all he could talk about was that once, when it was a farm, they had beautiful sunsets. But now that there's houses in the way, he can't even see that anymore. And then on the other one is, I can't remember the, what it said. Um, sacred something. Sa sacred, yeah, sacred something. Sacred woodlands. Well, that's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was really important. Like, I tried very different positions of how I was going to exhibit this and make show how important nature is. It was lying on the ground. It was um, lying on a grey blanket. It, like many, many positions. And then decided to do it like this. That fr it was just on the tipping point of it tipping over. And also, I also wanted that soil to start dropping onto the ground. That it's all about memory and that sacred moment of recognizing the importance of being connected. Uh, this is my last show I had. Um, this was at Rockingham and again, Rocking, uh, you know, th th this is an application. So you, all you guys start applying for Rockingham, okay? Seriously, 
It's fantastic you get to meet really amazing people who may never have been to Perth, even to an art gallery, to suddenly come across your work, not get it at all, and then somebody starts talking about your work and they, start, they sit there and go, oh, I get it. But they might not, it's okay. But they'll go home and think about it. And their world expands, you know? Um, that area is, is fabulous. And you've got great restaurants just around the corner. So here I go, um, this is just before the fires and um, uh, instead of the grey blankets I started looking at using materials that are more contemporary and I started looking at what people instead of the blankets, because the blankets are becoming more and more rare, so what do people use in times of emergency and for protection, warmth, whatever? These are emergency blankets. These are survivor blankets. Um, gold on one side, silver on the other. They work. They actually work better than a woolen grey blanket. So a lot of the refugees that you would see uh, landing in Greece out of the water or whatever, they, 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 there's a lot of photos of them wearing, having that across them to protect them. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to order seven of them and do something with them. So I ordered seven of them. I paid $29 dollars. And this was the first work, that, uh, the first material that I actually bought for years and years. They sent me 70. <laughs> and I went, shit, what am I going to do with 70? <laughs> so I started using them. And then half of them I actually sent to Greece, to my family, because they live on the coast and they often get refugees coming in. So instead of the the community trying to find some, then just give them these blankets. Um, and I hold you close for a reason is a quote I have often used. Um, it's a personal one for me. It's about people that I love and people that I don't. <laughs> now, so the fire. Um, not far from my studio, um, we've been bombarded with someone always starting fires. We, we, uh, my studio is in Yanjabab, which is south of Fremantle, where uh, it used to be farmland and or um, you know vegetable gardens and things like that. And then they became uh, development sites, and all along the um, stock road. There's all these black boys and trees that they kept for the motorists to go, ooh, there's, there's bushland, but actually there's a lot of houses. Mm -hmm. And someone's always burning it off. So it's always, the suburb's are always in danger. And I'm thinking, oh, how, how can I talk about environmental degradation and environmental dangers and global warming and all all the things that are happening in the world for us today, and also lands that are being bombed. You need fire brigades, you need water, you need, you know, fire extinguishers. There's a fire extinguisher company, a few uh, streets down from me, and they had hundreds and hundreds of these. And I went, oh, shit, I could use those. Mm -hmm. So I went and we had a conversation and they donated 150 wow. and I was able to use them. I had to give them back because they recycled. Everything, everything you see here is recycled. Um, and um, <coughs> this was a, a, a comment on the global warming. And then there's text on each, there's eight 
uh, emergency blankets or survival blankets, and then there's text. Uh, your enemy is sleeping. Now that's a uh, now the slides that I'm going to show you now are old works. Okay, that, so they before the last three image uh, uh, exhibitions I showed you. This was at Pika. This was when COVID um, started, and uh, we we were the last state in Australia that um, was pretty safe, but we still had to keep one and a half meters or one meter or whatever it was away from each other, which was that's the chairs, okay? Um, this project started originally before I got sick and it was going to be something completely different. And then I got sick and so they had to take, I had to take two years off. And then when I came back, this is what I wanted to do. I recorded over 80 people talking about their idea of love. And I'm not talking about Eros love. I'm talking about all the other loves, the loves of the land, the loves of your parents, the loves of your animals, the loves of human beings. Uh, love and also Eros love. And then on top of that, I recorded um, the sound of water, air, fire and earth and then I overlaid them I selected certain takes from the conversations of the 86 people and played th played it randomly through 150 speakers that were suspended from the ceiling and I think there was nine channels so it was all like it was crazy if it was loud, it was like <laughs> but I turned it right down so it was like <laughs> and it was all different conversation, com conversations in also different languages. And you could sit there, yeah. Yeah. And these were, these chairs, I'm using them again because I want to get them out of my studio. <laughs> And I'm using them for sculpture by the sea. And there might be, if they don't, if, if it doesn't sell, which it probably won't, I want people to come when we are distorting and take one <laughs> each. Because <laughs> I don't want it back. <laughs> um, this was really ethereal and, and really fantastic time to install at Pika because um, Pika was, it had windows that were all covered up, you know, above the doorways and I took that out and since then they left the windows, the lead light windows and it's beautiful light. In the distance here, in the corner here, there is the original idea that I had where I was going to do an installation where I cast people's part of their face just here and then embedded in the wall and there was three, three lips um, embedded in the wall and this is called Forest of Voices. And I love chairs. <laughs> And this is sculpture by the sea. I covered a chair um, in uh, gold leaf, real gold, but I didn't seal it. So when people actually sat on it, they walked away with gold on their ass. <laughs> and that was the whole idea that you sit there and you contemplate and you stand, st you sit still and you see the horizon. And hopefully, hopefully you can remember something special or have that space of connection with the environment. This is another work I did, uh, I've done, I started in uh, early 
1990s where I collect people's gifted hair and I weave it together as a ribbon of peace. Um, Is it ongoing? It's ongoing, but I haven't done anything for a while. I just get hair still in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a performance I did at Fremantle Art Centre, weaving the hair and people could come in and um, have their hair woven in there. Um, Olga, do you have um, an objective in terms of how long it was going to be? Yeah, it was going to be um, half, uh, 500 um, centimetres and I think it's about just under a hundred. <laughs> no, no, yeah, just under a hundred centimetres. Yeah. Like in do you, do you no, 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 sorry, no, no, it's kilometres, sorry. Kilometers? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, hang on. It <laughs> is, <laughs> it, I wanted 500 metres, yes, 500 metres, and I've got 72 or something like that metres. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's heavy, is it? No, not really, because it's very narrow. The, oh, the, the nice. first one I did the, in the early 90s, it's about a metre wide and about nine metres long, mm -hmm. and I didn't have an image of it, unfortunately. But um, I exhibited that, rolled up, spread out and wearing it. I originally wove it to make actually a dress out of it but then it looked so fabulous as a whole thing I just went nah. Uh, this work I did many years ago at Dada uh, working with uh, homeless women giving them a blanket and asking them about something in that that always they think about when they wake up in the morning or something that's really important to them and um, and then we were going to print it on the blankets but then we decided to actually pull apart another blanket and make words out of it uh, uh, letters out of it sorry and one I still remember one of these I think it was this one and it says we can still see any um, and then uh, we photographed these women. As you can see, there's camo on the back in the background. Um, and then um, these homeless women used to go to St. Saint, Saint Pat's in Fremantle and they used to do choir and sing. And this video is um, of one of the women singing uh, a song about how much she loves and it's just beautiful just beautiful and by she coincidence this is when du when I met Duncan Duncan and I bumped into each other and he goes I really really want to work with you on something and I said well I'm working at Dada and there's this woman and she sings incredible songs and he said oh well why don't I come over and just by chance, and there's no uh, editing, right? And he just videoed her singing, and then, oh, there is actually editing. We made the image smaller, just a little bit, not that much. And it's so beautiful. It's so desperate. It's so meaningful. And these women have got houses now. Now that's another hair piece. This one's nine metres. And I keep working on that as well. So that's instead of the weaving, I'm doing this now for the time being because every time I do this, <laughs> it goes... Nye, 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 nye. So I'm trying other ways of... Um, working. Th this is hair that keeps being sent to me from people all over the world. I don't uh, use an, uh, I don't document the names on this work uh, as the work that where I'm weaving the hair I actually document the names as well. 
This one is also in addition wedding rings and special rings that people don't want anymore or can't have anymore or someone's passed away or something. And instead of them holding it and not having a voice, they send it to me and I either melt it down and make another work out of it, which is uh, one of the works that I did was the, the lips. I did the gold lips, but that's another work. But, or I can use it in, in artwork that actually speaks of unity. And I keep working with it until I finish with the jewellery. This is another hair piece. This is just uh, small works that I've done. This is a slingshot uh, that I found in Greece. Um, and then human hair. This is one of the images of Molly in camouflage fabric. This is called Hope. Um, Hope is about um, uh, the box of... We learn the patriarchal story of the gods where when you open the box, all the evil comes out. Well, that's actually not the original. The matriarchal uh, history of um, hope or per uh, Persephone um, is um, the box is actually of all the it's all about unity, it's all about peace, it's all about fertility, it's, it's about development, it's about thought. And right at the bottom, right at the bottom of everything, there's the gift and it's called hope. But this one's a bit edgy. Uh, this is another work I did for Sculpture by the Sea. Um, it was um, a donga where I lived inside for the four weeks and talking about um, development, uh, poverty, and also who's got the right to be on that beach and space. So people could come in, they could stay there as well. I never, I never charged them. Although people kept on saying, what are you gonna charge them? <laughs> but um, yeah, so that, that was a comment on uh, property. There you go. Yes. And everything there, everything was found. Everything, even the cups and saucers and tables and rugs and everything except the bed. This is another work for Sculpture by the Sea and this is uh, typing on an old typewriter story, uh, personal stories of the public so they could come in and write whatever they wanted. Um, this is an, uh, this is a work I did called Ambition. It's Greek ornaments covered in blanket. It's another one. This is a very early work that I had in West uh, uh, in West Australia at Art Space Art Place. Um, it's empty cots. It's all about um, the war in Ira Ir Iran when America invaded. And um, it's about that saying that they had, if you're not with us, you're against us, which I find really weird, really stupid thing to say. Um, as long as you think like me, I, you're okay. You can be in my tribe. Yeah. Anyway. This is the Dove of Peace. This was at Heathcote. Um, I, was one of the, I was the first artist that was invited to interpret the space. And so I collected all these chairs from throwouts in the area and covered it in grey blanket, including the rocking horse. Uh, that's long time ago, me working with plastic, which I don't like doing very much, but that's weaving anyway. This is another work, uh, two toy guns I found in Greece um, and human hair. That speaks for itself. 
uh, early work that I did, uh, travelling around West Australia, collecting all the uh, roadkill, uh, cleaning it all up and then covering it in red velvet. The sacredness of ob ob uh, life and objects and animals. These uh, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me, which is... Um, so I covered all these rocks and sticks in camo fabric and made them into weapons. Uh, this is one of my first ever sculptures that I ever did, and that's a salt bed. So I'm really into beds and chairs. Um, a chain that comes from a burnt out church, a uh, chandelier chain that held the chandelier in the centre of the church, and I covered every link with uh, velvet. Uh, this is where you will see the white feather dress. Th this is a work that I did from 1991, um, a black, black suit with a white feather dress, and I've used that many times since. And that's it.